Welcome to my video on output transformer for a blues harp amp. This is PT 8.20. It's the 20th video in my uh, playlist for the Premier Twin 8 amp. This applies to any other amp in that genre, if you will, like a Fender Champ or any other single ended tube amp, single speaker, two speakers, single tube, 6V6, 6L6 or in this case is uh, 7591. There's a, uh, the transformers back then uh, for the output transformer is a lot different from what you can currently buy today. So when I built this uh, Premier Twin 8, I originally put in a Hammond 125SE and it sounded good. I could hear the distortion uh, of the circuit of the 7591 and it sounds great and wonderful and I like that but I was still missing the boxy bassy sound that those type of amps give uh, the Premier Twin 8, the Fender Champ so on and so forth so I did uh, some research now then since building that I've had a number of them come in for repair restoration and I made my own schematics I've had to make changes in components based on what was in the amp sent to me that I understand it being original and I'm going to do a series on how to detect an original Premier Twin 8 they're very few and rare out there now uh, most of them have been heavily modified so there are some indicators of what's original so I recorded uh, the components the voltages so on and so forth I built my own Premier Twin 8 and I'm still missing that boxy sound where is it so I decided to do some more research into that so in this video I'm going to discuss the output transformer design consideration because what you can buy off the shelf isn't going to give you the sound you're looking for if you've played a Premier 28 there's that sound and I figured out where it was it's in the output transformer uh, I'm going to go through uh, my approach to audio measurements with oscilloscope results I'm going to show you what the difference is between off the shelf and getting one specially wound. They don't cost a lot. You can go to Musical Transformers, talk to Matt, and, and tell him the specifications I'm going to give to you on this video. He'll wind it to you. 50 bucks, you're out of there. You put it in your amp, you're good. Then I'm going to do a sound check for you. I'm going to uh, play my E harp, and then I'm going to play my E harp with the off the shelf uh, output transformer, and, uh, and then the specially wound transformer to the specification that I understand Stancore probably delivered or had available at the time of these amps were being built and then I'm going to summarize the results so all the tests will be done on my Premier Twin 8 the 12AX7 preamp, Tremelo tube, 7591A power tube and 5Y3 rectifier I'm going to set it to 5 watts because it's all they were capable of 7591 could push 10 watts, mine will push 15. It's a little warm, I'd play it at 10 to 12 watts. So back then, today you can go buy a 20 watt output transformer. And if you get a 125 Hammond, it's 15 watts because there are a lot more secondary windings out here, 4, 8, 16 ohms in order to mix and match and fit whatever design is for your speakers to your output tube but and it has five layer windings on the secondary and that's important to understand there is a tonal difference then uh, is a common transformer I had uh, musical transformers wind this for me it's a 20 watt frame so it's about two and a half three pounds it's uh, 2.8 K to 8 ohm out which is the specification of the output transformer for the original Premier Twin 8 and the frequency range nowadays is about a hundred to fifteen thousand Hertz whether you buy one specially wound five layers or you get a off-the-shelf uh, output transformer it will probably tell you like the Hammond does is 10 to 15 thousand frequency range 
It's okay. This is not going into a hi-fi system. We're just playing a blues harp. Our range is in the 400 hertz range. Okay? So we don't need what that is. But based on the Stancor literature from 1950, uh, remember, the electronics have just come into being. Uh, everyone's putting in PA systems, the best PA speakers available. Oh, by the way, if you have an amplifier and it's a 6V6 tube, you need this output transformer. If you have a 6L6, you need this output transformer. If you have a 7591, forget it. They don't list that because that is uh, something that was made available in the early 60s in the literature that would uh, the Premier Twin 8 Multivox built from was from the late 50s. Off the shelf stuff. Put it together, sell it. So what they had was a, actually they had a 5 to 8 watt transformer for a 6L6 or 6V6. That's it. Call the day. I put a 10 watt into mine, but here's a key difference. It, back then, they just had three layer windings. They weren't worried about high fidelity stereo systems. That is something that came out of the 60s when that really picked up. You know, the Telefunkins of the world, Stancor uh, increased their game, whatever. But what Premier 28 had into them, what Fender Champs probably had in them, was a standard PA Stancor track like or equivalent transformer three layers on the output transformer and I played with that and I'm going to show you how to evaluate that the frequency range 100 to 7500 Hertz does that bother uh, what we're playing no that is not what's driving the sound change so let me go into next my approach to audio measurements with oscilloscope results so I'll play that clip next, and then we'll return here. This is the test setup I used to determine for a single ended tube amp, such as my Premier Twin 8, what size output transformer do you have? What size frame? And what is the difference between the 10 watt frame that I have installed, the 20 watt frame that's under test, and any other frame. So between the two, I'm going to show you the difference. The What I've done to, for the setup is, again, the frequency generator, input to the amp, that also goes to the input of channel one of the oscilloscope. The probe is put up against the output transformer and it goes into channel two. The probe is rather low tech stuff here. So I try to keep this rather practical for those of you at home that if you have a oscilloscope but you don't have thousands and tens of thousands of dollars of equipment, you don't need it. You just At least you have an oscilloscope that you can borrow from somebody. And just take a look for yourself. This is a guitar pickup. I put it in a, into a, a block of wood so that it wouldn't be an uh, electrical hazard when I input in around the circuit here. This is all insulated. I use the guitar uh, pickup and monitor it either on a digital volt ohm meter or my cell scope so I can look for magnetic flux such as the EMI off of the uh, Tremelo line. But I can then uh, take a look at where, what's going on. In this case, I am placing it on the output transformer. And what I have done is say that here's another output transformer. So you got uh, the primary side or secondary side, secondary side, primary side. They're not connected. This isn't connected. So as an alternative secondary, I have this guitar pickup that I then either place to the top or place to the side. If the input signal and output signal uh, are perfectly matched, so I have a perfect sine wave in, I should have a perfect sine wave out that would give me high fidelity. If I get a perfect sine wave out on the guitar pickup, then I have a good fidelity output transformer. Now then, what I've done for my amp is I wanted something, I could hear the distortion out of the tube. 
that I wanted. I can calculate that, I can see that, but it wasn't giving me the quite the grit that I'm familiar with, or if you've played a Premier Twin 8, you need that grit uh, to get it to sound bluesy. Uh, this 20 watt frame has five windings to it. That gives me a lot more upper end frequency range, which is fine, but also is more has more fidelity to it. So the sine wave in and out are pretty much the same, and when you put that on a oscilloscope, I should have a perfectly round uh, output. When you put the channel 1 and channel 2, you put the, mix the signs together in XY mode, it should be a round circle. That means what's going in is what's coming out, high fidelity. If it's misshapen, then the sine wave coming in being perfect is not perfect when it leaves the output transformer. The output transformer is distorting the input wave. And I have a video of both. But I wanted to show you what the test setup looks like to begin with. And then I'll show you the oscilloscope traces for that. So let's go do that next. Next, I'm going to do a sound check with the e harp with a green bullet mic. I'm going to uh, play the clean transformer first, and then I'm going to play this transformer next, the 10 watt, but more importantly, the three layer secondary winding transformer. It looks like this. It is, in fact, distorting the sound, which this is what's giving you that bassy, boxy sound familiar to all Premier Twin 8 players. This is my Premier Twin 8 build, 7591 tube, 5Y3 rectifier, 12AX7 tubes for the preamp and tremolo. I've set the wattage for 5 watts so I can best mimic the original Premier Twin 8 output. So. I'm going to play three riffs, uh, similar, try to get them similar, and one I'm going to play uh, just my E harp without the amp, then I'm going to play my E harp with the green bullet with the clean transformer, and then I'm going to swap in the dirty transformer, which is closer to the original spec of the output transformer as I've discussed and shown you in the oscilloscope, and I'll play the same riff again so that you have three uh, clips to compare against. Okay, E harp riff, no amp. <laughs> this time, same riff, E harp. Green bullet into the Premier Twin 8 with the 20 watt transformer, the clean transformer. I wired back in the 10 watt output transformer, the one that most closely matches the original specification for the Premier Twin 8. And that is, it has three windings on the secondary. So, same riff. Uh, e harp, green bullet mic. <laughs> Let me summarize the results again. With a standard transformer off the shelf, Hammond or wherever you select, it, what, they're probably in the 15 to 20 volt amp range. It doesn't make much difference, but the problem is it's a five layer winding. It's not so much the saturation you're getting into the transformer. I have a 10 watt, I'm pushing five watts into it well underneath the 
uh, barrier or the, the limit in order to cause the core to saturate. So it's not saturating. What it's doing is making is distorting the signal out. It's caused by the three layers. The three layers don't give you the fidelity out, as you can see on screen on the right. Five layers gives you fidelity. Three layers gives you, well, infidelity. <laughs> can we use that word? Okay, we can. If you're building a stereo amp, you want to go to seven layer on your winding in order to push up to 20,000 hertz with faithful reproduction of the signal in to the signal out. On a Premier Twin 8 or a Fender Champ or any other single-ended small blues amp, what you want is three wire, three layers, and you get those specially wound, 50 bucks, call the day, it's not a big deal. So the frequency range is diminished, but the difference is not in the frequency range and it's not the driving wattage. What it gets down to is the difference in construction, the construction, the layers, and fewer laminations. The fewer laminations, because the difference between this transformer and one I, I had uh, Matt build for me was it has fewer laminations and it's three layer winding on the output. And that's what's giving us on a Premier Twin 8 or any other similar amp the boxy, bassy sound that I've demonstrated for you. I hope this helps you in your selection of output transformers for a, for a blues amp, blues harp amp. Thank you for watching.